Welcome to Harvest at Home, everybody, and I'm happy you could be with us today. Uh, of course, we had to be out of the building for a couple of weeks, but you know, we're, we're used to being out of the building. We're used to being at home. So I'm hoping you're enjoying this uh, time with your family and sit around. Let's, let's sit around and let's get into the presence of God. Let's learn. Look, your house is the church. You guys are gathered together in Jesus' name. And he said, wherever two more gather together, there I am in the midst. So according to Jesus, the church is happening at your house right now. Now, we've been talking about Great Commission Training, and I'm going to continue on uh, that really uh, awesome course of learning so that we can all feel like we're not just receiving salvation and goodness from Jesus, but we're becoming what He wants us to, to be. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. And so, look, this is the mandate on all of our lives. Why? Because Jesus, the Lord, told us to do it. So that must become our passion. Now, I want to talk to you today about receiving God's strategy to change the world. Look at Luke 6, 12. Now, it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountain to pray, that he continued all night in prayer to God. Jesus is all night praying. And then the next morning, he has a convention of all his disciples. We don't know if there's 30, 50, 500. We don't know. But he's like everybody who's following him at that point, he calls them together. And from those people, he selects 12. Now, some of these guys may have been with him a while, but he got a, a revelation that I need to choose 12 out of all the people. I need to choose 12 and make them apostles or people that I would be my leaders that I would send out. Now, just stop and think. Jesus has an awesome ministry. Thousands and thousands of people coming to hear him preach. Uh, hundreds of thousands maybe being healed and blessed. We don't know, but we know he has a powerful ministry. And then he has this time with the Father all night long, and he comes out and says, get everybody together. He says, okay, all you guys are my disciples, but I want you to know I got a strategy from God, and I'm choosing 12, and I'm going to choose them to be apostles. Think about it. This is Jesus coming into divine strategy. You have to believe that, of course, he was under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, moving, preaching, healing. Now he's coming into divine strategy where he says, I've got to form these 12 guys and we're going to call them the 12. Now, that's a powerful thought that this vision took a moment for God to reveal it to him. So it was all night in prayer and then he received something. Say it with me. Say receive. So there's, there's something that you can be Jesus. You can be totally in love with the Father, totally full of the Holy Spirit, and still not have God's strategy. Until one night, God reveals strategy to him. He says, here's how we're going to do it. And God reveals this simple strategy of 12. Uh, of course, it worked. We're here 2,000 years later because of this simple moment of receiving strategy. Wow, that's powerful. Now look at Matthew 9, verse 35. And we'll go through uh, chapter 10. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Think about that. Jesus said, I have compassion, so you pray that the Lord of the harvest would begin to speak to the people, not just to be Christians, but to be leaders in the harvest, to be people who would step out and watch out for other people. Next scripture. And when he had called his 12 to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out 
to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. So now he's multiplying himself. There it is. It's the same basic story I read in the beginning that Jesus said, I've got compassion. Pray for leaders. Okay, let me just raise up some leaders. Jesus has a moment of coming into God's great strategy to win the world. Now, the names of the 12 apostles are these. Simon, Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus. And you go on to the end in Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Now, let's stop and think about this. Jesus not only has a great heart, he not only has a great ministry, he not only has a great mission to go to the cross and be raised from the dead to destroy the power of sin and death, but he also had a great strategy to win the world. And that strategy was, it was not a TV station or it wasn't a, a satellite or it wasn't a, you know, some music that we could really play. And he, none of that. He had one great strategy. He said, I've got leaders, I've got followers, but I need leaders. I need people who arise up, not only just leaders, I need 12 people, that guys that I can be with and pour myself into, and I'm going to put the power to do everything that I have been doing, I'm going to put it on them. Now that's exciting because that's you and me. He wants to empower all of us to do ministry. But I want you to you know, break this down with me a little bit. Number one, God's vision is for the multitudes. John Wesley said this. He said, my parish, meaning my congregation, is the world. He had a moment of vision where it stopped being a handful of people here or there, and he saw the multitudes of people, and he came to a conclusion that in order to reach them, I'm going to have to give them leaders. I'm going to have to have the Holy Spirit raise up leaders who will repeat this simple process. Number two, Jesus' compassion was for sheep without a shepherd. Listen, classes are good, but classes don't actually show you how to do anything. So Jesus wanted his kingdom to be a kingdom where everybody would take responsibility for someone and say, follow me as I follow Christ. To mentor people was Jesus' heart. It's what he actually did. Do you have a mentor? Well, then you're like sheep without a shepherd. If you don't have anyone that can actually help you walk along with you and say, read like this, pray like this, and hey, watch out for that. Now, look, these people don't control anybody, but Jesus said we need people that will help preserve their life. So we have to multiply leaders. His compassion was that people need spiritual leaders like you. Number three, Jesus' strategy was to form a small group of highly committed, highly trained men and then multiply them. Now, there's, a, there's an illustration called the penny that multiplied. It's a simple illustration. It goes like this. If I ask you to work for me for a month and I say, listen, you work for me one month and I will pay you uh, $100,000 this month or... I'll pay you a penny the first day and we'll, multi we'll double it every day. We'll double what you're paid every day. Well, most people quickly look at the first week and they say, uh, I'll make one penny, then I make three pennies, then I make six pennies, then I make 12 pennies, then I make 24 pennies. And they quickly come up like, wait, I, I worked a whole week for $1.95. No, thank you. I'm not in that strategy. They'll say, give me the $100,000. Not knowing that if you had taken the multiplication option at the end of one month, you'd have more than $10 million. And you got paid 100000 for your, your quick calculation, but you lost $9.9 .9 million in one month because you didn't respect the principle of multiplication. Do you remember Pharaoh when he saw that the, the children of Israel multiply? He had to just pile on work on top of them because he knows if they keep multiplying, they're going to take over. And every country where real Christianity is embraced over time, it takes over that country. Like in Rome, Rome was ruling the world, but Rome fell to Christianity through the power of multiplying Christians who were, they didn't have any buildings, but they had a vision. 
And this is what God is calling you to do. You say, well, I just don't feel it. It really doesn't matter. Are you a disciple of Jesus? You got to start feeling, thinking, and doing the way he did. Are you with me? So why? Why does Jesus' vision mean so little to Christians? Jesus is a vision for multitudes, and they're like, well, he's my Lord, but I, I'm not into that. Why, do, why does Jesus' compassion for, for souls mean so little to Christian leaders? Jesus had compassion to raise up leaders, and, and, and most leaders don't see it as anything. Why is it not? If it was important to Jesus, shouldn't it be important to you? Why does the Jesus' strategy to win the world through small groups, why does that mean so little to people who are in charge in Christianity or to you? How can it, something be so important to Jesus that he received it from God, the Father, and he lived his life for it? How can that mean nothing to you? It must be received, that's why. It must be something that the Holy Spirit has to come upon you and begin to teach you the vision of Jesus for multitudes, the compassion of Jesus that people need leaders, the strategy of Jesus to get 12 and be with them and watch them do the same thing. You know, it's like one of those things that's right in front of you and you can't see it. It's right there. It's always been there, but you just can't see it. You're, you don't have a paradigm that sees it. You're just looking right over it and thinking, well, that can't be it. I've got to you know, do this and that and, you know, express myself and be an individual. Listen, those are important things. The most important thing is to be like Jesus and to imitate him. I play the piano, you know, you guys know I love music and I've always just, I could play music all day, every day. I could be a musician. I, I could have done that with my whole life. But, but the piano, if you look at a piano, you, you think, you, if you go, uh, you know, like C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If you look at those notes, that's the scale. That's the C scale. If you look at that scale, you know how many numbers of notes there are? There's 12. In fact, all music is governed by 12. In fact, every song you ever heard was written in a principle called 12. There are only 12 notes. I don't care how you use them. If you're into Arabic music or if you're into classical jazz, you can't do anything that's not in that 12. It's all combinations of one or the other. Because in God's eyes, the only way to govern the ungovernable, the only way to reach the unreachable, to do the undoable, is to use a principle called 12. And then you say, well, I don't know why that's important. Well, it just happens to be important to God. And it was very important to Jesus. He received that. You should receive it. And even if you don't understand it, you should say, well, at least Jesus did. That's what I'm doing. How many months are there in a year? Oh, 12. That means all the planets and the sun are governed by the principle of 12, that the moon is governed by 12. And that we know that we have a New Year's Day, meaning we finish one 12, starting the next 12. That the years are governed by 12. Time itself, the immeasurable, is governed by 12. Now, have you looked at your watch lately? We used to wear watches with a little face on it, and they had a 12 at the top. That means, Jesus said it, you have 12 hours in a day and 12 hours in a night. That means, that's why on your clock there's always a 12, because all time is governed by 12. Every night and every day governed by 12. So we look at our watch, say, what time is it? Is it our entire life is governed by 12? Our years on this planet, our days, all of our minutes, all the seconds that we have, they're all governed by this powerful principle of if you want to do the impossible, understand 12. Solomon, wisest man, Besides Jesus ever, Solomon, when he, when he became the king, he governed Israel with 12 governors. God, through Jacob, who became Israel, formed, had 12 sons, and there were the 12 tribes of Israel. All Israel was governed by 12 tribes. Was that an accident? No, <laughs> of course not. This is a principle that there's something powerful about it. Jesus formed 12 disciples. Did you know that the first act of the church in the book of Acts, when they, they, they were just praying and praying and seeking God and seeking God, and then they, they stopped and said, wait a second, 
We only have 11. And they said, we got to get 12. And so the church, the first act of the church, other than praying, the first act was to say, we've got to find the 12. Who taught them that they needed 12? Jesus taught them that. So you're saying, Pastor Bray, is that some kind of a doctrine of 12? No, it's not a doctrine. It's a, it's a methodology that Jesus said, if you want to govern something that's almost impossible to govern, use 12. And so, well, that doesn't mean anything to me. Well, that doesn't mean it's not true, just because it doesn't mean anything to you. It meant a lot to God. It meant a lot to Jesus. It was the strategy that God gave him. His entire strategy was something very simple. I'm going to have this awesome relationship with God. I'm going to have this awesome vision, and I'm going to have some people come be with me. That's it. Not a Bible college, not a course, but be with someone who is highly successful and highly anointed. Be with them, to be with them. Jesus knows if they're with me, they're going to catch what's on me. So when, when you're on a pulpit, these people are not with you. They don't know how you deal with crisis. They don't know how you deal with challenges. So Jesus had this simple strategy. This is the way you change the world. Have a great relationship with God. Have a powerful vision and call people along for the ride. And they will do the same thing. That's it. Be a disciple that asks people to be with you. The simplicity of, of this is just focused on be like Jesus. How do you win the world? Be like Jesus. How do we disciple multitudes? Be like Jesus. Three simple steps to discipling nations. What are they? Number one, become a real disciple of Jesus. Passionate in prayer, passionate in the word, compassionate for people, winning the loss. Be like Jesus. Well, I want to be like Jesus, but I'm not really called to do all that. That's just baloney. That's just weird. You, you say, I want to be like Jesus, but I don't want to be anything like him. Because it's easy to say, I want to be like Jesus. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Well, he already did it. And you can imitate what he did. And if you do, you're going to change the world. Step one, become a real disciple of Jesus. Step two, invite three to be with you. You know, that's what Jesus did. He got Peter, James, John. He had Andrew. But he, he got these three primary leaders and they helped him form. Each one of them helped him form three others. Read the Bible. It's what Jesus did. He didn't work his head off. And he just, he just began to, he got three people who would help him form others. Now, it's, it's not a law. And these are just an outline. But I want you to see that, that this is to change the world. It doesn't take a whole lot. You just have to be a real Christian anointed by Jesus. And then you have to call some people along to be with you. Now, there are ways to do that. And everybody's got their own ways to accomplish that. But this is what Jesus did. Step three. Set a goal to form 12 and teach them to do the same thing you did for them. Set a goal to form 12 and teach them to do the same thing that you did for them. If you do, you'll win the world. Without a Bible college, without a TV station, without a radio station, without a whatever. If they shut us down and take away our houses, it's still always going to be the same thing. To win the world, you need God's beautiful strategy. Become like Jesus. Just do what he did. Jesus said, greater works than you do, uh, that I do, you're going to do because I go to the Father. Jesus said, look, when a disciple is finished, he becomes like his teacher. I'll read you that in a minute as we're closing. But listen, just imitate Jesus. How about that for the new wild a doctrine. Here's the doctrine of Christianity. Imitate Jesus. Believe what he believed. Do what he did, and you're going to win the world. That's what an awesome teacher he was. Just do what I do. It ain't gonna, it ain't gonna ruin your life. It ain't gonna cost you any money. The gospel free. Worship's free. Everything about the kingdom costs nothing. Just do what Jesus did, and we will change the world. Well, what are you talking about? Okay, here's, here's what Jesus said. Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow. This three simple things to change in the world. Deny yourself, stop doing your thing. Pick up your cross, start doing his thing, and follow. Just do what he did. Well, could it be that simple? Oh, it's that simple. 
It's that simple, and you are the generation who are going to catch this strategy. I said before, when I'm look at Luke 6:40, I'm closing with this. A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who is perfectly trained will be like his teacher. Is there a better goal than my goal is to become like Jesus? Not an admirer of Jesus only, but a disciple who becomes like him, who heals the sick, preaches the gospel, raises the dead, forms 12 disciples, and sends them out to do the same. Wow. Do that, change the world. Don't do it. You might have a good life and a good ministry, but you won't have accomplished what the great anointing and great wisdom of Jesus is. The simple power of Christianity is one simple goal. To get 12, brother? No. One simple goal. Be like Jesus. WWJD. What would Jesus do? Well, he already did it. And if you will do what he did, you will have received, you'll have to receive his vision. You'll have to receive his compassion and you'll have to receive his strategy. He takes the simple, excuse me, he takes the complicated and undoable and makes it simple and doable. Are you ready to pray? Because I want to pray for you that you receive his vision, his compassion, and his strategy. Will you do it with me today? Come on. Right now, just lift your hand. Say, Lord Jesus, my life is yours. I receive everything that you did on the cross. And I believe it was all for me. Now, Lord Jesus, I want to obey you with my whole life. With all my weaknesses, with all my issues, with all my misunderstanding and my lack of understanding, I give you everything. Come on, pray it with me. Say, now, Lord, with my hands lifted, I realize I have to receive your vision into my heart. Lord, allow me to live to win the multitudes. Lord, I have to receive your compassion. Lord, let me be motivated to give people the leadership that they really need in order for them to succeed. And number three, Lord Jesus, give me your strategy to form a team of powerful, trained people and send them out to do the same thing that I did for them. Come with your hands up and say, Lord Jesus, my goal in this life, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like you. Listen, those of you that prayed that with me, we're getting ready to play, play, play a worship song. I seriously want you to begin to say, Lord, I just need to receive what you're saying to me. I need to be like Jesus in all that I do. I'm not going to shove it to the side. I'm going to ask you to burn it in my heart. So all my days, I live for your vision, your compassion, and your strategy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have an awesome day, and we'll see you soon.